do you define a bad relationship? You might have heard all about the different signs of a toxic relationship, how to get out of a dangerous relationship, and everything in between. But how do you know when it all begins? The signs are there, but to a lot of people, they can appear harmless in some cases. But in others, even if you manage to get out, these bad relationships can still haunt you. 22-year-old Julia Chiquetten had just ended a bad relationship. She looked forward to graduating with a degree in biomedical engineering. But just a few days shy of her graduation, Julia went missing. And not long after, her body was found in a gully near Lake Barches on November 18th of 2022. But what happened to Julia? Why was she so viciously attacked? Who did this to her? Well, the answer was clear as day from the get-go, but it didn't surface until Julia tragically lost her life, leaving her family and the rest of Italy in a deep pit of sorrow and fear. The terrible case of Julia Cicchetten hits too close to home for Italy because, sadly, Julia was a victim of a problem that was far too prevalent in the Italian community. Welcome to True Crime Stories. If you're new here, I post new true crime cases every single week. I'm not some AI bot that's just looking to cash in off a tragedy, just a real human talking to other real people. So if you want to see some good old fashioned true crime documentaries, hit that subscribe button. It's totally free and will keep you up to date with all of my future videos. Julia Chiquetten was born on May 5th, 2001 to parents Gino and Monica. The couple also had two other children, a daughter named Elena and a son named David. The family lived in Padua, Italy, and this is where the rest of this case takes place. Julia was defined as a headstrong and caring girl who was always there to help. She was also very gentle and loving. Even if Julia disliked someone, she'd be polite and mature about it. That certainly didn't mean that she didn't have boundaries and let people walk all over her, but rather, she preferred handling uncomfortable situations by communicating and sorting things out. Julia was also smart as a whip. She wasn't the type of student who didn't know what she wanted to do. She had a plan for everything. She was fond of biology, healthcare, technology, and engineering. She saw herself working in the field of biomedicine, and that was exactly what she did after high school. Julia enrolled in the University of Padua, Italy, and she pursued a degree in biomedical engineering in 2020. Just taking a look at her career choice should be enough to tell you Julia wasn't your average person. She was incredibly smart, gifted, and special. Julia was genuinely happy with her choice of study because it meant that she could work in two fields that she was passionate about. It also helped that it was a three-year program. And fast forward to 2023, and Julia was looking forward to graduation. But at the University of Padua, Julia met someone. He was a fellow student named Filippo Toretta. Filippo was in the same program as Julia. He was also majoring in biomedical engineering, and he, like anyone who met and interacted with Julia, was enamored by her. Julia and Filippo didn't meet right away after starting college. In fact, they met in 2022, when both of them were more than halfway through their studies. Julia took an interest in Filippo, and the two started dating around this same time. Julia affectionately addressed Filippo as Pipo in their regular text conversations. Things were okay in the beginning, with the couple constantly being affectionate with one another, but the relationship didn't last long. About one to one and a half years into the relationship in the summer of 2023, when Julia was about to graduate, the couple broke up. But the thing is, at the young age of 22, both Julia and Filippo had their whole lives ahead of them. This breakup was more of a minor setback than anything else. Even though Julia didn't have a hard time moving on from Filippo, the same couldn't be said for him. Even though things looked okay on the surface, they were anything but perfect inside because Filippo was an emotional, angry, and possessive guy who wanted Julia all to himself. It seems clear from this that Julia must have been the one to break things off, not Filippo, and he was willing to do anything to get Julia back. According to Julia's sister, Elena, Filippo had a habit of acting irrationally at the best of times. So when the going got tough, he could be incredibly unpredictable. He would constantly bombard Julia with messages, always asking her where she was and demanding to know what her plans were at any given time of day. Filippo also took emotional advantage of Julia, telling her that he felt depressed and had very dark thoughts about ending his life. 
Even after their breakup, Filippo was insistent that they get back together again, as he quote, couldn't see a future without Giulia. Over the course of their relationship, Filippo sent Giulia almost 225,000 text messages. And that's not a typo, and he didn't hear me correctly. That's 225,000. That's almost 300 messages a day. Essentially, the undertones of every message were the same. They were layered with insecurity and jealous on Filippo's part. He would constantly wear Julia down by saying things like, quote, come on, please, can you at least tell me if you started texting some guy? Julia, I feel terrible, you're destroying me. And how can you think of starting to see another guy? It seems like such a violent thing towards me. Now, we don't know whether or not Julia was seeing anyone else at the time that these messages were sent, but that's not the point. Julia and Filippo were broken up. It was clear that Julia was uncomfortable around Filippo, and this is proven by her response to his messages, in which she said, quote, You made me lose trust. Your obsessive methods scare me, Pippo. Look how you treat me like a criminal. It's a control mechanism, and sick too. Pippo, you are obsessed. You are a psychopath. You can clearly see the difference in Julia's and Filippo's messaging tone. Filippo sounds downright mad at Julia for breaking up with him making himself out to be a victim, while Julia can be seen trying to reason with him, trying to make him see why his obsessive and controlling behaviors were wrong. Even though the couple had broken up, Filippo would still torment her every single day, and Julia was starting to feel annoyed at Filippo's senseless behavior. But still, since Julia didn't have a bad habit of resorting to fighting and a misunderstanding, she tried to make Filippo understand with reason every single time. But sadly, for Julia, Reasoning with Filippo was like talking to a brick wall. He just refused to take no for an answer. Not only was Filippo offended by the breakup that Julia had initiated, he was also starting to resent her. And the reason for this was unbelievable. For unknown reasons, Filippo wouldn't be graduating at the same time as Julia. And this was something that bothered him a lot. Seeing a woman who was also his ex-girlfriend who bruised his ego by breaking up with him and seeing she was ahead of him, well, he didn't like it. Julia was paving the way to her future, and Filippo was stuck at college. Filippo was egotistical, and seeing Julia moving on with her life and preparing for graduation made him very bitter. There was something dark bubbling underneath, and Filippo would soon let it all out in the worst way. And sadly, Julia would be the one to take the brunt of the impact, and she would pay for it with her life. November 11th, 2023 was a normal day for Julia. She and Filippo would still meet every so often, but Julia made it clear time and time again that they would never get back together. Now, some might question why. Why was Julia meeting up with such an obsessive and controlling man when they were clearly broken up? Well, the answer wasn't that simple. Filippo unfortunately knew how to tug at Julia's heartstrings, and he emotionally blackmailed her into spending time with him. If Julia refused to meet up with Filippo, he would threaten her with suicidal thoughts and make her feel bad. Julia, being the ever-loving and genuinely caring person that she was, saw no choice but to give in to Filippo's insistent behavior. This was also something she shared with her sister, Elena. Besides, Julia was already looking on the brighter side. She was days away from tossing her graduation cap. She would soon get her degree in biomedical engineering, and she was excited. On November 11th, she wanted to take a trip to the mall to buy some shoes for her graduation. At around 6 p.m., Julia went to a shopping center in Marghera, and she was accompanied by Filippo. Now, we don't know whether Julia wanted him to come with her, or if it was Filippo basically guilt-tripping her into letting him join her. Regardless, the duo got the shopping done, and they even ate together at a McDonald's in the shopping center. And Julia's credit card activity also showed that she paid for both their meals at around 9 p.m. Afterwards, at around 10.30 p.m., the duo were seen leaving the shopping center, and 10 minutes later, Julia sent her sister Elena a message on WhatsApp. Sadly, this would be the final message Julia would send to anyone. The next day, after not hearing from Julia, her father was very worried about her. It was unlike Julia to not reach out to her father, especially since her mother had recently passed away in the fall of 2023 from cancer. Gino's children always called and checked in with him. Elena was also worried about her sister because she wasn't responding to any of her texts, so she immediately started spreading the word on social media while in Vienna. She had an awful gut feeling because she knew that Julia was last seen with Filippo, and now she wasn't picking up her phone. 
Gino proceeded to report 22-year-old Julia missing at the local police station at around 1.30 p.m. on November 12th of 2023. The police immediately sprang into action and they started asking around for any information on missing Julia. It was overall a weird and tense situation. Julia was at the end of the line and was jumping up and down the walls about her graduation. She wouldn't just up and leave, deserting her family and her bright future. The police were also made aware that Filippo was the last person to be with Julia, and to everyone's surprise, he was nowhere to be seen either. His parents, Nicola and Elisabetta, hadn't heard from him either, and this raised even more suspicion in the police's mind. While asking around, a witness came forward with some very alarming information. According to the passerby who was standing over his apartment balcony, there was a violent scuffle between a young man and a woman in a black car on November 11th at about 11.15 p.m. The area was 150 meters from Julia's house, and according to the witness, the girl screamed out for help, which caused the witness to call the police. But no one came, as all the units were busy and the nearest help was 45 minutes away. The police took note of the black car, which was a Fiat Punto, and after that, the authorities came across another bizarre yet chilling instance. See, the police looked at surveillance footage from a factory located in the nearby town of Faso, and it was very unnerving. The footage is the very frightening recording of Julia being attacked by none other than Filippo. In this footage, police very clearly saw Filippo violently attacking Julia. She even tried to make a run for it, and that was when Filippo heartlessly attacked her from the back, and he was then seen loading Julia's motionless and severely injured body into the back of his Fiat. At this point, the police had no doubt in their minds, and they knew that Filippo was certainly responsible for the disappearance of Julia. A large manhunt for Filippo was conducted, and the news of Julia's disappearance and Filippo's involvement was everywhere in the Italian media. Everyone was horrified. To think that someone with whom Julia was previously in a relationship with could turn so vile and downright deadly sent a chill down everyone's spine. See, Italy is a country where femicides and gender-based violence are sadly very common. It's a horrific act that is unfortunately deeply rooted in society. The culture of Italy is extremely patriarchal, dating back to the Roman Empire, Italian fascism, and Roman Catholicism. It wasn't uncommon in olden times for women to be categorized as second-class citizens. They were used as collateral, incubators for heirs, and they were taken advantage of in every horrific way you could think of. Even in the 21st century, Italy reeks of misogyny, and the killing of women in the name of honor is still prevalent. In 2023 alone, almost 109 women were driven to their horrific ends, and more than half of the perpetrators were men who'd previously been in relationships with these women. This is the country that 22-year-old Julia Chiquetten was living in. By now, the police had two very important tasks at hand. The first was to locate Julia, and the second was to catch the criminal, Filippo. After seven long days that felt like forever in the Chiquetten family, on November 18th, 2023, the police, along with cadaver dogs, were led to Lake Barchis, and there, they made the discovery that crushed everyone's hopes in the case. Julia's body was recovered by the Civil Protection Unit, and it was a horrific scene. Julia's body, especially her face, neck, and hands, were covered in wounds, and she was found inside of a large nylon bag in a cave about 50 meters in altitude within a wooded area that was generally closed during the autumn winter period for security reasons. It was a remote location, and from the looks of it, it seemed that Filippo had done a lot to cover up Julia's location and ensure that no one found her, but they did. The discovery left the Chiquetten family in the depths of grief and sadness. Not only had they lost the matriarch of their family just a couple months prior, but now they lost Julia too, and that too just days before her graduation. Julia's body was taken for an autopsy, and on December 1st, 2023, it was found that she'd sustained anywhere between 20 and 75 injuries, and those were ultimately the cause of her death. The sheer number of wounds on Julia's body clearly indicated this was a crime of passion. Someone wanted to ensure that Julia didn't come out of this alive, and unfortunately the perpetrator was successful in snuffing the life out of poor Julia, who had so much to look forward to. Everyone was saddened by the untimely and tragic passing of Julia, but the police had a pivotal job to do, and that was to catch Filippo and make him pay for his heinous crime. 
And thankfully, something did happen to drive the police in the right direction. See, police were informed that Filippo was last seen in Austria, and this was bad news. Filippo was on the run, and now he had fled to another country. Upon hearing this, Gino, Julia's father, made countless appeals in English and German, asking people and authorities to help catch Filippo, as he was now considered a runaway, wanted for taking the life of his daughter. Those appeals turned out to be helpful, because one week after Julia's life was savagely taken, the German police caught Filippo in an emergency lane of a highway after his car had run out of gas. Apparently, Filippo was trying to run, but he had no money on him to buy more gas for his car. In a surprising twist, as soon as the police caught up with Filippo, his only words were, quote, I am Filippo Toretta. I killed my girlfriend. It's insane to hear Filippo address Julia as his, quote, girlfriend. He clearly wasn't over her and refused to acknowledge the end of their relationship. When Filippo's car was searched, the police recovered a bag containing a change of clothes, kitchen knives, and duct tape. Fast forward to November 25th, Filippo was extradited back to Italy on a special Air Force flight that landed in Venice. He was jailed at the Verona prison and charged with voluntary manslaughter aggravated by premeditation, cruelty, ferocity, stalking, and concealment of a weapon. Filippo's electronics were also taken by the police, and in them, they found some bizarre things. In his computer, Filippo had made a list of sorts, and it turned out to be a murder list. He mentioned having things like maps, a full tank of gas, blocking the car doors, tying up Julia's hands and ankles, having knives, duct tape, shovels, and more. This list is a clear as day sign that Filippo had every intention of ending Julia's life on November 11th. So the murder was definitely premeditated, as the list was made a couple of days before Julia went with him to the shopping center. The police also found out that Filippo was a bit deranged. After their breakup, Filippo had secretly installed a spy app on Julia's phone so that he could track every single activity of hers, which is unbelievable on so many levels. Armed with all of this information, the prosecution was awaiting trial, which was set to be held on September 23rd, 2024. As of recently, the first hearing of the trial was held. Even though Filippo chose not to attend, he has confessed to viciously attacking and ultimately killing Julia. And he did this in front of a judge. Filippo confessed that he wanted to get back together with Julia and even brought her gifts for her graduation. And these gifts were actually recovered from his car when he was arrested. When Julia didn't comply with his demands, he took her life. The prosecutors are hopeful that the jury will be convinced and they will be able to sentence Filippo Toretta to life in prison, but that remains to be seen until the verdict is passed. But let's be clear, Filippo has already confessed to this crime, so it seems like a pretty simple case. His next court date is scheduled for December 3rd, 2024, so hopefully we will have some answers about his sentencing fairly soon. The terrible and violent passing of Julia has taken all of Italy by storm. Protests and rallies were held by angry and frightened women of Italy, and this was a way to not only bring more attention to Julia's case, but to also shed light on the horrific and patriarchal Italian culture. Julia, who had so much to experience in her life, unfortunately made it to the list of more than 100 women who lost their lives at the hand of an unstable ex-partner. Julia's funeral was attended by thousands of people. They paid homage to her by shaking their keys at the end of the service, a popular Italian sign to not tolerate violence in silence. Italy's first female prime minister, Giorgia Maloney, vowed to end gender-based violence for good by enforcing awareness at an educational level and by increasing funds for women's shelters and anti-violence centers. She also went on to express her sadness at Julia's untimely passing by saying, quote, we all wished Julia were still alive, but sadly, our worst fears came true. I feel great anger and sadness. Julia was buried next to her mom, Monica, and her family is completely broken after this tragic loss. Julia's dad, Gino, made an emotional and impactful statement and urged men to become agents of change and cultivate a safe, secure, and free community for women to live their lives without any fear of being a victim of a problem that's more like a habit in the Italian community. This whole aspect of Italian culture is just downright stupid. Let's just call it what it is. Thankfully, on February 2nd, 2024, 
Julia was awarded an honorary degree by the University of Padua in the presence of her family and relatives. All of her hard work wasn't for nothing, and it's so heartwarming to see that her family will have one last piece of Julia that they can hang on to forever, as a symbol of the amazing and determined young woman that she was. Julia's sister stated in an editorial for an Italian newspaper, saying, quote, Filippo is often called a monster, but he isn't. A monster is an exception, someone outside of society, someone for whom society doesn't have to take any responsibility. But the responsibility is there. Monsters aren't ill. They're the healthy sons of the patriarchy and assault culture. The increasing femicides in every part of the world, Italy included, are proving the narrative that modernity doesn't actually mean safety. It doesn't mean better. But why? Gender-based violence is becoming a fast-growing tumor, and even with the influence and awareness, we're clearly unable to make the world a better place for anyone regardless of their gender. How many more innocent people have to lose their lives unfairly and baselessly until it becomes a turning point? Why not stop now? Why not protect others now? Cases like these say a lot about the world we're living in, and honestly, it's just depressing. We have to vow to better ourselves and raise our children better so that they can grow up and become pillars of safety for other people, not perpetrators of heinous and brutal crimes that tear innocent families completely apart. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of True Crime Stories. I wanted to give a special thank you to a couple channel members, including Natalie Weston and Dustin Frey. If you also want to become a member of the channel, you gain access to new videos sometimes days or weeks before they're uploaded to the public, and it's currently the best way you can support the channel and help out. I really appreciate those of you that have decided to do that, and if you want to join, you can click that big join button below the video or find the link down in the description. But as always, if you enjoyed this video, check out this other interesting case I covered, and don't forget to subscribe. It's totally free and keeps you up to date with all of my future videos. But my name is Ty Knotts, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.